one of the uh, great things about uh, owning a car for 20 some odd years is uh, you end up accumulating a lot of parts and sometimes you don't always have a great place to stash it. So here on the back patio of my parents' house, there is this creepy little box right here. And if you open the creepy little box, there is an even creepier root cellar down there. Now Austin was just in there, so that's why the door's open and the lights are on. But um, we're gonna head on down there and uh, I'm gonna show you where I've been storing a lot of these parts for the last 20 some odd years. Austin, how was it down there? Creepy. It's actually, I mean, once you get past the really creepy staircase, the creepy door and the, the being under the house and creepiness thing, yeah. it's actually not bad. It's dry, it's warm. Not bad. And the dead animal carcass? And yeah, there's a mummified cat. <laughs> All right. I am I'm, I'm a bit of a phone sensible. So you can see just exactly how unbelievably uncomfortable this going into the cellar is for okay. somebody so of your size. This wasn't, by the way, this wasn't here when I put all this stuff mm. in. The, the funny thing is there was a bush here. I should tell you about this. This whole patio wasn't here. Uh, this box wasn't here. It was just a bush that had grown over the opening, and we didn't discover that there was a root cellar till like six months after we bought the house. And I was trimming up the bush a little bit, and I was like, oh, there's a door under the house. Let me go see what's in it. And I opened it, and it was like a half-excavated root cellar. So I was like, oh, that's great. So in order to get all these parts down here by myself in my 20s, I used to have to come out here with a broom, and I would push the, the bush to one side with the broom, hold it open like that and then carry things in here like rear ends and seats and I mean there used to be a lot of stuff down here um, I'm glad I gave some of it away but uh, yeah then my parents had this patio built and they took the bush out and they built this box to hide the creepy door because nobody likes a horror show in their neighborhood but getting in here uh, once you're in it's nice but uh, getting in here is a bit of a predicament Phone? There you go. All right, let me see if I got that. Okay, so here we are. And uh, yeah, don't mind the fact that we have infectious waste hazmat bags lying around. There's actually no infectious waste in there. I got a bunch of infectious waste bags and I was like, oh, that's gonna be so cool. I have all GTO parts in these like hazmat bags that are really scary and warning you, right? Oh, that's great. There's an animal carcass right here. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I feel bad for you, man. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can see there's like... Now, a lot of this the previous owner had done because he had started a restoration on the car. So there's a lot of stuff that's been labeled and marked. There's also a lot of stuff that's not. Uh, there's an entire door here, which I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get out because I don't think it'll fit through the doorway. Um, but we're going to find that out. Uh, we have a steering column, bumpers. Ooh, there's headers. Deport headers, those are nice. Uh, there's a dashboard, rear seat, uh, wrapped in plastic. So I'm assuming it was good and I saved it for that reason. Um, this was one of the cars I had uh, part, the, you know, I think the previous owner part of this one actually. This was an engine fire in Le Mans. And you can see the burn was limited right to the front here. And, you know, because the, the paint's still intact front and back but it's all burned up in this area. Well, I'm gonna start passing this stuff up to Austin and uh, hopefully uh, anything cool, I'll, you know, turn the camera back on and uh, let you know. Otherwise, the next time you see this, we're gonna be looking at a pile of stuff on the, uh, on the deck. Hey folks, so it's actually the next day. I just wanted to show you the, uh, fruits of our work yesterday we didn't have time to film a lot of it but uh as you can see over my shoulder here the car is on the trailer in addition we have a ton of stuff as well this is the fruit of a life of owning a car for 20 years and trying to restore it in that time while other things are going on you tend to accumulate a lot of stuff what we have here are a set of quarter panels there's one this side and one that side these are quarter panels they're semi rust free I mean, the sills are way more solid than what's on my car right here, as you can see. No Bondo in them anyway. Um, these were 
on a drag car in New Hampshire and I had to go up there and cut the car in half to rescue the quarters. Um, also got some doors here from some parts cars, uh, transmissions, there's front fenders, inner fenders, basically all the bodywork to uh, fix what's rusty on the car. Uh, one cool thing I do want to show you, uh, this car, it was a body on a, on a drag car. And I want to show you in the jam here, this was an original uh, purple, there was a color for 67 called, I think it was Iris Mist or Purple Mist or something like that. But it was an original purple car, which is kind of a rare color. What was even more strange is the uh, dash panel for this was blue, meaning that this was a purple car with a blue interior originally, which is the weirdest color combination I've ever heard of. Must have been a special order. Unfortunately, this car didn't come with a VINTAG or a data plate. Otherwise, I'd call up Pontiac Historical Services and get the uh, um, build sheet on it just to verify. Um, might have been worth saving then, but I don't know. This, this There was not much left of a GTO. It was a real GTO, though. As you can see here, there's no uh, Le Mans fender vents covered up by Bondo. This is all solid steel, uh, good steel. That'll help me patch up what's uh, rusty on the car. Uh, we've got a couple of seats up there, too. Got a four-speed here. Um, my car's an original TH400 automatic, but I, the previous owner gave me an entire manual transmission four-speed swap. So there's pedals and all that stuff. Um, other rims in here too. There's uh, every wheel and tire option for the car. Uh, in addition, the car itself is just jam packed. Uh, in the window here, you can see there's a actual rust-free tail panel. There's a brand new nose panel too. So I really, I really do have every piece of metal to restore what's rusty on this car. Although by the time I'm done replacing it, I don't know what's going to be left. Um, the only thing I didn't take was I have a hood, a new hood and a new trunk. And the trunk on this car is not bad. It does have like one little spot right here and one little spot right here. that looks like somebody covered up with Bondo years ago. But other than that, it's a solid panel. Um, a lot of guys, uh, they put the Hearst emblem here, Hearst shifted since this is a Hearst, his, hers car. Um, the dual gate shifter was made by Hearst. They, there was a, a accessory badge that you could plunk right on here. And that was uh, to let people know that it was uh, Hearst equipped. And uh, actually, I think the four speeds were Hearst shifters too. Hey everybody. Just wanted to let you know how this was going. Uh, yeah, we're in the middle of uh, some sort of weird snowstorm uh, and the truck has started to lose power uh, the uh, f-350 we've been hauling the uh, car home with so uh, we're trying to figure out a solution right now it was uh, on some of those hills it wouldn't go past 25 miles an hour I don't know if you can see like there's a lot of snow coming down right now too so uh, it couldn't have picked a better time I mean look at this it's kind of it's like this weird, it looks like dipping Dots almost. It's like this fine pellet kind of stuff. So, you know, we'll figure it out. And uh, hopefully this isn't our only adventure on the road, but stay tuned. Yeah, I don't know if this reads on camera, but man, this is a snowstorm in uh, April. Uh, we're still in Pennsylvania. Um, so far so good. It seems like the truck healed itself. So I guess we'll, um, Keep uh, plugging away. This is what happens when your bad ideas begin to compound exponentially. Here's the GTO. That is Summit Racing. And- uh, Right there's the interstate, so you kind of have to come here. Yes, we are like literally right off the interstate. Actually, the excuse was, I think, a pee break yeah. and to check the uh, toe straps. Check toe straps. Uh, unfortunately, we're not in the stage of massive parts buying just yet. To the, and if we did, we still couldn't carry any. So it was just swag for today. <laughs> uh, so yeah, since the car is Hearst Equip, I figure Hearst Hack, why not? Um, but we're almost home to Ohio, so we're just moving and shaking and whatnot. Um, but uh, back on the interstate, two hours to home.
Okay, so I just had to make another real quick uh, detour. I don't know whose this is, but some of you know that I'm a crazy Jeep fanatic. And there is this XJ Cherokee in the parking lot of Summit that looks freaking amazing. And uh, I don't know if you can see this. It has what looks like a turbo setup because there's a blow off valve through the cutout, the roughest cutout I've ever seen in the hood. This is just an absolutely killer Mad Max XJ Cherokee. Uh, I used to have one in this exact same color in 86, but mine was a two-door Laredo, and it was never this cool. So uh, kudos to you, guy, whatever you are in the Summit parking lot. This thing is awesome. So issue number three for us, one of our ratchet straps, the ratchet just let go. And it's the one holding these inner fenders in, so rather than create a big problem, we're on the side of the highway in Akron, Ohio, trying to uh, not get killed by traffic while uh, ratcheting this stuff down. And it looks like we're doing okay. Uh, so far, everything's still good. We didn't lose any parts off the back. Just the uh, spring inside the ratchet mechanism let go. So uh, what are you gonna do, you know? How are we coming, Austin? Ready to roll. Ready to roll? Ready to kick the tires and light the fires? All right, yeah, it looks tight enough. Yeah, don't die. Yeah, put it in D would help. <laughs> no, I'm just watching all of these people not moving over. Oh, nobody moves over in Ohio. That's a Pennsylvania thing. Jesus. You know. It's even like on our signs. Right. Drive friendly, move over, whatever yes. it is. Yes. I ever, I ever tell you the story about Akron? It's a cursed city for me. Uh, when I was driving back from Power Tour in 19, I hit a road expansion here, and it uh, uh, cut my tire three quarters of the way around. You could, I did tell you about it. Yeah, but Oh yeah, we should put the photo in this. Yeah, insert uh, photo here. Yeah, so you could see the barrel from the outside of the car, which is not a thing you're supposed to see. But uh, yeah, hey look, downtown Akron, follow 76 West. And we got the sun in our eyes and... Uh, no sunglasses. No, dude, that's for wussies. So I have deep set caveman eyes, I can just squint. Yeah. It's fine. It's all good. In the, in the 400,000 mile diesel tow truck. You know, that's been doing awesome, by the way. You're a good truck. Like, this is a great truck. what a hell of a tow vehicle, right? Great truck. Anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can beat the darkness to uh, Columbus. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, no, definitely not. Yeah, famous last words. No, no, it's seven o'clock. It's not gonna. It's gonna get dark before we get home. We yeah. have an hour and twenty minutes for the sunlight. So, yeah. no. by the way, thanks to GTO parts, this is all we can see out the back. So we finally made it back to Lucor with the GTO and uh, it is night as you can see. It is pitch dark here and yeah, can't see anything. Here's the car, right? I have to feel out. Um, Austin thinks that we can just drive this thing off the trailer and he's probably right, but we're gonna about to find out right now. Um, we're gonna turn on a bunch of lights and see what we can do. Uh, and he'll probably film it and hilarity will ensue. So stay tuned. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, we kind of filled the car with uh, a lot of stuff here. So I got to unload it to be able to get it off the trailer real quick. Um, so that'll be fun. And uh, it smells great. Oh my God, this smells so noxious. Hey, good news is the dome light works. How about that? Like you open the door and the lights come on. Well, actually, you turn the, the knob here because, you know, that's what it is. They work like that, but they work. Um, shock of shock. So yeah, let me move some of this crap out of the way and then we can get it off this wonderful U-Haul trailer that we had to rent. So I don't have a lot of run-up room either. I think I'm going to end up on that guy's lawn. That's fine. Uh, all right. Yeah. Put the ramps down. Fair enough. Let, all right, let's do this. Is that the official open the hood trick? No, it doesn't want to pop. I feel like if somebody bent the hinge. Yeah. I, for that, I am truly sorry and going to pay for it. But since it's my car, it's my hood to mess up. So let's get this air cleaner out of the way. 
Who needs clean air? This thing breathes dirty. Donde está el test tank? There. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We should probably put the line on it first. Because I don't like getting covered in gasoline. Really? Well, look, um, gasoline makes a great cologne, but only if you're trying to attract other dudes. That's, that, that is true. You know, which, by the way, nothing wrong with, you know, just women, in my experience, have not very much been attracted to guys that smell like a pumping station, or a filling station, I'm sorry. Wait, did I just age 40 years? Does being around this car make me old because I just called it a filling station? Hmm. Well, that's nice and dry, so... Gotta spin on it a little bit. Move it up to get it on. Yeah. There we go. See? Doesn't just work for the bedroom. Spit, it's a hell of a lubricant. Brought to you by the National Spit Council. Alright. I'm in the rear form tonight. Nine hours in a truck will do that to you. <laughs> okay. So, we're going for decent amount in here and then I don't know where the ketchup bottle went but I have a feeling we're gonna need that I have no idea where your ketchup bottle went it's in the car somewhere probably I'll find it do you have more gas around here in case we need it probably not possibly probably not maybe does that mean you're driving my Audi to the Costco it's closed it's a blah, blah, blah. it's closed the gas station in Costco? Mm -hmm. well, Closes at 9 o'clock. Oh. You know what time it is? 9.01. We pulled in the parking lot at 9 o'clock. Oh, shucky darns. You didn't warn me. All right. Let's see how we can get this. That should be enough. All you got to do is get it from there to there. That better be enough fuel to get it off the trailer in 60 feet. What can I say? He's just said and done. Or I'm going to yank it with one of my Pontiacs and we'll pull it off here. Austin, I love you, man, but your jankiness exceeds even my own. It's also true. Uh, that's going to hit the fans there, Hoss. Is it? Yeah. How did we do this last time? Where we didn't we have a little fans? tie that we tied it off on here. Oh, well, the tie's on the seat over there. So that ought to do it, right? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? I'll keep it out of the fan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ignition's hot. Contact. <laughs> Yep. Rolled over. Roll it out. Keep rolling it. Yep, fire's out. Give me a little bit more fuel. Okay. Battery's getting weak. Uh, Interesting that you're backfiring that bad out of the carb. Huh? Interesting that you're backfiring that bad out of the carb. The timing's probably walked. Uh-huh.
Oh. As if we're not being janky enough, we just found some old fuel in the shop, and the hope is that it's not old enough that it'll. Uh, yeah, it looks like normal gas. Maybe. Yeah, it smells okay. That should be enough. Yeah, that should be more than enough. It's got a little tinge to it. No idea where that came from. Mm, it smells okay. And it's not great. That's right, you're trying to break all your stuff tonight. Okay. It's not a giant gas bomb waiting to happen. Ready? <laughs> I'd say your timing might be a little off. This is going to take a while if you do this four feet at a time. You got most of the way there. Say what? It sounded like I hit something. Did I hit something? Nope. Nope. Take it back that way and bring it forward. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so easy. It is. All you're doing is backing up and going straight. Yeah, and it's all with drag and brakes and nothing works. And... Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Give me about another three feet. Don't hit the blazer.
Maybe we should just push it. I feel these brakes. You can't push this. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's in. Like a glove. Woo! Wow, that is close. Yeah. That is some uh, precision jackassery right there. <laughs> wow. It's in. Cool. Congratulations. Good job. There were at least two or three fireballs that were magnificent. Yes. Okay. That that reached the hood. You're doing good, Dave. I just kind of want to show you this. This is what a life of hoarding GTO parts will get you. A garage filled with uh, three quarters of a car that you can't drive anywhere. It's like awesome. a compact. It is. You cut the middle out of it and you squeeze it in. You know, I got to tell you, this is not super confidence inspiring that this car will fit in this garage, by the way, since this is a oh, modern yeah, I do. garage. Like, right. we could technically put those front fenders that are over there yeah. on the shell just to see the lengthwise, like how far it's going to go, but... I I do not have super confidence that like yeah there is like you're going to have to pull that stuff off the back wall Yeah yeah I can bring one of mine over here and try to put it in here Dude what have I told you about one man's car and another man's garage I'm just saying Yeah well, I don't think we're going to do that because I'd have to pull all this stuff out again. But, That's a good point. You know. It'll fit. Okay. It'll fit. Yeah. Might have to knock a hole in the wall. That's okay. I'm. You know what? Actually, when I move the Jeep over here and I break down the VW and I break down all that stuff, it, could, it probably will just fit. Uh-huh. Keep know. thinking that. Positive energy. Why can't they build garages like normal sizes anymore? They do build them for normal sized cars, not for old school cars. Well, you know, I gotta tell you, this car isn't any shorter or longer than a new Suburban. Oh, well. So why couldn't I get a new Suburban in this garage? Or an old Suburban, or a G... You know, I used to park this next to my dad's GMT 400 all the time. It was the same exact length of that car, so... We'll see. I give up. Anyway, I just wanted to show you all this because... Uh, damn. <laughs>